I wrote down some of the perfumes that I get a lot of compliments for and I also wrote down perfumes where I gave compliments and I was having the idea to do a top 10 most complimented fragrances according to you video. I enjoy those videos a lot and I was so interested to see what you would say and so I have the list here and I have some of the perfumes in my collection or I had some of those perfumes in my collection. At least I know every one of them and I have opinions on them. Let's start with the number 10 and we go up until number one. So number 10 is Vanilla 28 by Kayali, which I feel like for me, I would say gets a lot of compliments from other women. In my opinion, women love vanilla fragrances a lot more than men do. When I wear vanilla heavy fragrances, I always get compliments, but it's mostly from women. It's the same with Vanilla 28. However, for me, I have it in my collection and I enjoy it, but it's not a love. It is quite a spicy vanilla for me. A lot of people say it's like a straight up vanilla. To me, it's not. It's quite deep and alluring. It's beautiful. I always have to sneeze when I spray it. And for a vanilla fragrance, and mine looks almost black, it doesn't have the longevity that I wish it had. And it's almost not sweet enough for me. It's hard to describe, but because it's so, so spicy and deep, I wish it was a little bit more sweet. However, I do get why people compliment. It's a beautiful vanilla fragrance, easy to like, and still something special. It's not just a simple straight up vanilla. And speaking of vanillas, I have Mon Guirlain by Guirlain at number nine, which is a fragrance that I think has a cult status and a lot of people I know wear it and love it. And it gets suggested still to this day in every year in a lot of videos from other creators. I have to test it out again because my perfume taste changes a lot and maybe I will enjoy it. I have the Floral Virgin at home, which is a little bit more light and floral, of course, um, and a little bit more fresh than the original. But for some reason, the combination of the vanilla, it's a lavender vanilla heavy perfume, is just not something that I crave. I don't know why, because I adore Burberry Goddess, which is also a vanilla and lavender fragrance, and I'm obsessed with that one. And I usually love Guerlain fragrances. I love the vanilla in Guerlain fragrances, so I'm sure something will change and I maybe have to find my flanker of it, but I did smell all of them, I think, and until now I did not crave any of them. Something in there is a little bit too much. Maybe it's the lavender that is a little bit too much for me. I'm not too sure because I have other lavender fragrances in my collection that I do love a lot. But as I said, I can totally get why you would get compliments when you wear it because it is a cozy, comforting vanilla fragrance with a twist because of the lavender. Oh my God, the vanilla doesn't stop. At number eight, we have Lira by Serjov. And this one definitely is also a vanilla fragrance with notes of vanilla, caramel, musk, but then it also has lavender, blood orange, bergamot, cinnamon, licorice, and jasmine. It doesn't really sound like something I would love and I do not. I have a travel size of it and it deepened up so much. It's crazy. This is a strong perfume when it's fresh, but it gets so strong when it deepens down. It's a very 
thick and heavy vanilla scent that is quite fruity. I think a lot of people say it smells like an apple pie. I don't get that at all. To me, it smells very mature. I don't know what's happening on my skin, but I know so many gourmand lovers who are in love with that one. I don't feel like it smells very gourmand just because there is so much of this vintagey powderiness on my skin that I don't really get the gourmand tones underneath, if you know what I'm saying. To me, it smells very thick and sweet and powdery and fruity, but nothing I'm attracted to, not at all. And I tried it out so many times. I don't really get the hype. I don't really get the hype and I don't feel like I would compliment somebody on it. But it is beautifully made, I guess. For some reason, I forgot to tell you about the number seven, which is Serzhov's Erba Pura. And maybe that will tell you something about my opinion on this perfume. Or maybe not, but um, I totally get why this is one of the most complimented perfumes with you. But also I know a lot of my friends wear this perfume and they get tons of compliments. So basically it is a very, very strong perfume. And a lot of times the ones that are just weaker are not that prominent to others and they cannot really smell them. And the more strong a perfume is, the more compliments you get. But of course, the perfume has to be good. And this time, Erba Pura is a very fruity, summery perfume. And most of the time, those perfumes are very weak performing and people cannot really smell you. So the fact that this is a very strong, strong projecting and also long lasting perfume that is super fruity and fun and happy and summery smelling is a plus. And I do appreciate it for that fact. I love to wear fruity perfumes in summer and I did wear Erba Pura last year sometimes because I was craving a very fruity summery perfume with lasting power and it does give me the lasting power but it has a very strong dusty musk scent especially in the base and it gets stronger the more or the longer I wear it and for some reason that is something I cannot stand on my skin. I love musky perfumes, but this one is so dusty and I get it with a lot of fruity perfumes that have a better um, performance. So I don't know what it is about those perfumes, but that is the reason why I wasn't 100% sure about the perfume and I also did not get a full bottle of it. I just have a very big decant of it. And I do appreciate it, but as I said, I don't really wear it that much because the musk note is so prominent. And I have fruity perfumes with a good longevity that I prefer to wear over this. But as I said, I do get why people compliment on this perfume. Then at number six, Parfum de Mali de Lina. I have it in my collection. I am a Delina fan. I know a lot of people are not into it. I feel like you would have to like roses to like Delina. Delina is a beautiful fruity floral that doesn't have this deep patchouli note that a lot of those perfumes have, especially those with performance. And this one is almost a beast mode on me. I spray it on in the morning and if I overspray I would smell it on my skin or on my clothes the next day easily and on my hair it's so long lasting. It's a very fruity almost sour smelling perfume. I think there's rhubarb in there, lychee but then you have a very modern 
fresh take on roses and I feel like there is vanilla in the base. It's very smooth, it's creamy, it's fun, it's happy, but it doesn't smell juvenile. It's mature enough and it's something that smells special enough to be worn as a wedding scent and I have recommended it as a summer wedding scent especially and I love the perfume bottle but it's easy enough to be worn as an everyday scent as well. When I had this very new in my collection I did wear it as an everyday scent and also it's a great gift and I have to say my opinion, my experience, a lot of guys like rose scents, especially when they are sweet. And so every time I wear Delina, I get compliments and it's mostly from men. So this is funny because it doesn't seem like a sexy, attractive date night perfume, but it is exactly that. If you want to lure somebody in, this is the perfect scent. Same goes with number five. It's, it's crazy to me that those two are five and six, but number five is Maison Francis Kirchan Baccarat Rouge 540. And this is a cold perfume now. And we had, we have some history. When I first smelled it years ago, I was just mesmerized. I was like, oh my, I smelled it on someone and I was like, what is this? This is crazy. This smells so good. I've never smelled anything like it. But at the time it was just too expensive for me. And then Cloud by Ariana Grande got launched and I thought, mm, it smells quite similar to me. And I got the Cloud one. I used quite a lot of it. And then I got over it and it was just too much. And also here, so many people wear Cloud, Baccarat Rouge or any of the perfumes that smell like those two. And so I, I couldn't really smell it. And then I saw a video of someone raving about it years later. And I was like, oh, I should give it another try. And I fell in love and I got a bottle of it and I used up quite a bit of it already and I use it as a layering perfume a lot. Minimum once a week I would say. I also wear it on its own and it's so much more than what I thought it was. The cloud one is so much more mm, dense and sweet and right now at least to me it's very airy and fluffy and almost smelling like the perfumes in the air instead of on your skin it's so special to me so complex there's this beautiful florally saffron note that almost has something about like suede leather but then you get a super sugary almost like cotton candy brown sugar thing that's super light it's not very heavy it's a very light scent that is very strong the funny thing is when i spray it on its own i smell it the whole day i get compliments every time i wear it from men and women but when i layer it as a base i cannot smell it it's like i'm nose blind to it but it makes almost everything more intense or better or both and yeah it's like magic to me and so i think i will always have a bottle of it at home number four is giorgio armani's rouge malachite to me rouge malachite smells like a more smooth luxurious more easygoing version of Alien by Mugler. That one I wanted to love. I had it in my collection and I wore it a couple of times, but it was always too much for me. I smelled it on a friend and I, I loved how she smelled. She smelled so, so good with it. But every other woman that I smelled, especially in the club back in the day, uh, wore it and it was just too much especially because I have like memories of women wearing it in the club and it was like hot and you know like 
mixed with other smells and I don't know I just have <laughs> like a specific smell association with this perfume and then it's extremely strong and then it has quite a heady jasmine in it and that note is just not for me I love like sophisticated creamy jasmine notes but that one in Alien is just too much. But the Rouge Malakite, and we wanted to talk about that one, uh, is, I'm going to see what the notes are exactly. It is in the same family, but to me, it's just a little bit more suave. So I see there's two types of tuberose in there, um, and jasmine, and ylang ylang and orange blossom oh my god there are three types of tuberose in there base mid and top oh god uh, maybe that's it but to me it's just too much tuberose too much jasmine there is this cashmere note in there and benzoin and i feel like together with the amber it makes it so much more smooth and creamy and a little bit more toned down um, in comparison to alien but still it is quite heady and I feel like if I would wear it, I would get a headache either way. So it's not my scent DNA, but I know that a lot of people like Alien or liked Alien back in the day. So I would have guessed that a lot of people do like Armani's Rouge Malakite because it seems to be like a level up from Alien. It's funny because I wouldn't say Tuberose and Jasmine are super sexy notes, more like elegant, but in here it's the perfect balance of being like sophisticated and elegant, but also sexy and alluring. Number three is Bal d'Afrique by Bayredo. That's very interesting to me because I don't know a lot of people who wear it and also it's quite unisex to me. So. I am a fan of Bayredo's fresh scents. I love G Water, Bal d'Afrique, Mojave Ghost. I love all of those perfumes and a lot more. And this one is beautiful because it has the note of violet together with juicy sour fruits. You have lemon, bergamot, blackcurrant, orange flower. Then you have some other florals and you have a super strong vetiver. To me, it's mostly vetiver, lemon, and like something floral. It is quite green to me and aromatic and citrusy and it has like a woody base. It's perfectly unisex. I do not have a bottle of it yet. It's very surprising actually, but um, I like it on my skin, I like it on me, I like it to smell on others. I have definitely complimented, maybe I should go through the ones I have smelled and I complimented people on. So I definitely smelled Delina on others and complimented them, as well as Baccarat Rouge, as well as Bal d'Afrique. Yeah, it's something unisex, it's green, it's not a very strong scent, which is interesting that people compliment when they smell it on someone but i like it a lot and i would compliment anyone wearing it doesn't matter who it was number two is also super surprising burberry burberry her i feel like this perfume is like you either love it or you hate it when it came out i feel like a lot of people were either super excited and in love or annoyed and it was created by francis kyokshan and it smells a lot like Baccarat Rouge in a fruity version. And I feel like a lot of people were a little bit annoyed because they smell Baccarat Rouge and Cloud and things like that in that time period a lot. And so to have another perfume smelling like that other perfume with fruity notes was just a little bit un uninnovative. <laughs> uninspired maybe but years later now 
Um, and let me tell you, I was one of the ones who was like, okay. Uh, I wore cloud, I think, in that time period. And I was like, okay, I have cloud in my collection and I smell Baccarat Rouge so, so much. Why do we have to have this perfume now? But now that I feel like I adore and appreciate Baccarat Rouge even more, and I also layer it a lot with, for example, fruity scents, I can appreciate Burberry Her. And actually I have the Elixir version, which is like a more creamy strawberry version of that with a hint of Baccarat Rouge. The uh, one that I feel like you were referring to is a little bit more fresh and more like Baccarat Rouge smelling. It's like a strawberry fizzy champagne with Baccarat Rouge. <laughs> so this saffron, ambery, mm, brown sugar perfume with fizziness and strawberries and it's beautiful. It's beautiful and I have to wear Burberry Her Elixir this year more because when I got it, I wore it a lot and then I kind of forgot about it, but it's very beautiful. And I feel like this is one where women and men are gonna compliment you on it because it just smells happy and fun, but it's sexy at the same time. And the number one is Dolce Gabbana Light Blue. Would you have guessed? I would have not. <laughs> this has the main accords of citrus, woody, fresh, and fruity. Same direction as Baldafrique, I would say. It's very unisex. I feel like it was one of the first perfumes like it, especially in the designer world. And this to me is super unisex. This has a notes of lemon, apple, cedar, Bamboo, jasmine, rose, cedar, musk, and amber. But to me, it's all about the lemon. It's super citrusy with a woody base. I get a lot of the cedar. I get the apple. It's very crisp. And the sour lemon drizzled on top of it. Sometimes I had the feeling of it smelling a little bit like a cleaning product. But then you do get the woodiness and you do get some florals, but it is very citrusy. And I never owned light blue. No, I never owned light blue. I have one for Moschino, which is called I Love Love. And that one is similar to light blue, but to me it smells less like a cleaning product and more like a perfume. It's super fresh, it's intense. It has also like a woody dry down, there are some florals in there. It's quite fruity, crisp, sour, and perfect to wear throughout the summer. And also on my skin had a better lasting power than the light blue. I do not think I got compliments on the I love love one. And I never complimented someone on wearing light blue just because it is not the strongest perfume and it's just a nice easy everyday perfume if it's super hot this is gonna cool you down and it's gonna refresh you like a cleaning toilet or something um that sounds very negative but it's actually not at all i like it it's just not a perfume where i would give a compliment for I feel like. So these were the top 10 most complimented fragrances according to you. Let me know if you want a part two. For me, that was super fun. So um, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.